Like for example, here's the stand from the uh, barrel cactus, right? They could do that or make a, a different stand. Maybe I'll make a stand. <laughs> Hey there, fellow miniacs! Once again, it's time to get crafty! In this episode of Diva Diorama, we're going to be showing you how to make those very stylish little stands for our Make It Mini Lifestyle plants that we teased at the end of our last video. These stands are very simple to make and can be crafted using very basic tools and materials. I am providing a template I created and will show you step by step how to put them together. We'll also be showing you some techniques for painting them using a variety of craft paints. So let's get started! So here are some of the basic materials you're going to need for this project. You're going to need a pair of scissors or you can use a craft knife. You're going to need, these are some sheets of lightweight chipboard. They're about a half a millimeter thickness or you can use some recycled chipboards. You're going to need some glue. I've got some Elmer school glue or you can use glue stick if you want. Some other useful tools are a craft cutting mat is very useful. This is one that I purchased from the dollar store. A tool for spreading glue. I like this rubber rubber tool for spreading glue. Also a needle point tool for holding items as you apply glue. Um, I also like some to have something heavy on hand and these are some one, two, three blocks I think they're called. You might also want to get some um, paint here. I've got some acrylic paint and you're going to need paint brushes of some sort if you use acrylic paint. So the very first thing we're going to do is get our pieces cut out. If you have a Cricut or a Silhouette machine, I've got an SVG for you to use. If you do not have a die cutting machine, you'll want to start off by printing the PDF instead. Both files are available in the description box below. Print the PDF on the thickest 8.5 by 11 paper you have available, as we'll be cutting out the shapes to use as a template. Be sure you print the PDF as actual size. Do not shrink the size of the printout. Here I've got my PDF printed. On it there are nine different patterns that each have two pieces. I'm going to choose a design and start cutting it out. Of course you can use scissors but I'm going to use a craft knife. Let's just try and cut it out freehand. And again you're just going to be using this as a template so you can use scissors if you want to cut this out. I just like using a craft knife. Okay, here. Free that up. Of course, be careful when you use a craft knife. You don't want to be as careful as you can be. Okay. Piece. Okay, we've got the piece out. You can put that to the side. And then we're going to, like, for example, if we want to use our uh, Mary's Bone Crackers box, we just take it apart. I'm just going to use a pencil here. You're going to want to trace that. Of course, the the thicker the uh, paper that you print the template on, the better, of course. Here I am trying my best to keep the template piece stationary while I trace around it, making sure that my pencil lead bumps up right up against the template as I draw my lines. Okay, so we've got it transferred on there. And now we want to cut it out. Again, I am using my craft knife here and I am choosing to cut on the inside of the trace line. I find that rotating the cardboard around so that I only cut in one direction is the easiest. So I'm just continually rotating the cardboard here so that I am cutting in just one direction. Always making sure to keep the fingers of my left hand away from the knife's cutting path. Okay, and that 
should pop out. Each stand is made up of two pieces. Here I am removing a small notch that each piece will have. This is where the two pieces fit together to create the structure of the stand. You'll want to repeat the tracing and cutting of each of the stand pieces, stacking them until each stack is thick enough to fit into this little notch. To save time, I used my die cutting machine to cut out the pieces of this stand. For the half millimeter chipboard I used, I had the machine cut three of each of the stand pieces. When the three pieces are stacked, they fit snugly enough when they are put together. And you can see that here with this dry fit. So as you are cutting layers, you can check the thickness by dry fitting the pieces together like this. So with all the layers of our two stand pieces cut out, we're going to move on to gluing them together. You can use just about any glue, but a glue made for working with paper is probably the best. Here I'm just going to use some simple and inexpensive Elmer's glue. You really want to try and spread it into an even and thin coat on each piece so that the layers adhere really well together to give the stand some strength when it dries. I really try to keep my fingers out of the glue because it just makes it easier easier for me to keep the project clean throughout this process. So this is where my rubber or silicone tool comes in really handy to spread the glue out while I use my needle tool to hold the piece down. I spread it really nicely and then um, take one of these guys. Should be symmetrical so you stack them, glue them together. Here I'm just ensuring that the pieces fit together as closely as possible. Kind of like straightening out a deck of cards. The nice thing about Elmer's glue is that it doesn't dry immediately, so it gives you a good amount of time to work the pieces together before they bond. Now that I'm happy with the alignment of the first two layers, I'm going to place them under something heavy to ensure they dry flat. Here I'm using my 123 blocks, but use whatever you have, like heavy books or boxes. While the first piece dries, I'm going to work on getting the first two layers of the other piece glued together in the same way. 123 block on that. Now that I've got that piece done, I can go back to the first piece and work on getting the third layer on. I can let that dry under the 123 blocks. Go back to this one. I'll do the same with the second piece to get that last layer glued on. Now that all three layers have been glued together on both pieces, I'm going to set them aside to dry for a while under the weight of the 123 blocks. So we've allowed these pieces to dry and uh, now we can put them together. I'm just going to use more Elmer's glue and I'm going to apply it kind of liberally there. Just having these two pieces come together like that. Okay, we can clean that up using our tools. Here I'm just cleaning up the excess glue to ensure that it doesn't dry into clumps. And with that done, I'm going to once again let this dry quite well. Overnight would really be ideal. As you set the pieces aside to dry, adjust them so that they are as perpendicular as possible when viewed from above. All of the different stands are pretty much assembled in the same manner except for the bow tie design. For this particular design, you want to bend each of these in the center like so, and then you'll want to glue them to each other. Try not to, to flip them. I am applying glue to only one side of this first bow tie, then sticking the second bow tie onto it and adjusting it so that the two bow tie halves meet up as perfectly as possible. Then I'm going to add glue to the two halves of the bow ties here and add the third bow tie to it, again ensuring that all the bow ties match up as perfectly as possible. As you can see, this creates a three-legged stand. Unlike the other stands, this one already has its structure at this point, so we're going to use clothespins to clamp the pieces together while it dries to ensure we get a good bond. Okay, so now that we've allowed that to dry, we can remove these for the moment. Now that this first layer has dried, we're going to add the second layer basically by just gluing them to the existing form like so. And again, making sure that the pieces align as perfectly as possible. 
You can just kind of straighten them up. Now that we've glued the second layer on to all three sides of the stand, we're going to once again close pin it and allow it to dry for a long while. Again, overnight would be ideal. I actually made all of the stands and now that they are all dry, I am going to paint them. I'm going for a wood look on our first stand, so I'm using this burnt sienna acrylic paint as a base coat. I'm trying to cover it as thoroughly as possible using just the smallest bit of water to thin out this paint because it is pretty thick, having come from a tube. You run the risk of warping the stand if your paint is too watery, so take care not to thin it out too much. I'm going to let this first coat dry a bit before adding a second coat of burnt sienna just to ensure a nice even color throughout the piece. This second coat should definitely be enough for a base color. And again, once I'm done applying it here, I am going to set it aside to dry for a while. Here I'm coming back to it after it has dried and now that I'm satisfied with that coverage, I am going to apply a very dark walnut colored gel stain here. This is an acrylic stain, so it's very easy to work with. You brush it on, and then, while it's still wet, you take a dry cloth or paper towel like I'm using here, you wipe some of it off. It's a translucent product that leaves just a hint of color, so this dark walnut layer will deepen the color of the burnt sienna base just a bit in certain places to give more the look of real wood. I'm working pretty quickly here, covering areas with stain and then wiping it away and repeating the process until I'm satisfied with the results. You can get as precious as you like with a finish like this, trying different techniques to age or distress the piece as much as you want. With that layer dried, I decided to be a little extra and here I am applying a final top coat of satin varnish. Again, like the gel stain, this is an acrylic varnish that you can find in just about any craft store. It'll add a slight sheen to the piece to sort of make it look that much more like real wood. To create stands that look like metal, I like to use metallic acrylic paint. However, typically metallic paints lean more translucent than opaque. So the trick to getting it to look like metal without having to do multiple coats is to first use a base coat on your project. For a gold finish, I am first painting this stand with a bright yellow before applying my metallic paint. So here I have a stand that I've already painted with two coats of that yellow base color and now I am applying my metallic gold color. As you can see, it almost immediately looks like gold. I am going to do two coats of this gold just to ensure I get good coverage. With this stand, I've already done two base coats of black acrylic and now I'm applying a bronzy metallic paint and will do two coats to get enough coverage. The options are endless for these stands. You can also paint them a solid color, black or white, or any other color for that matter. Keep them plain or add a wash or stain on them. Finish them off with other kinds of varnishes, matte or gloss, anything you imagine. So you've already seen these first five stands. Here are the other four stands on the template featured with some other mini terrariums I made using the doubles I found in my lifestyle capsules, plus some other mini materials I had on hand. I had a lot of clownfish. So I took the bowl and did an arrangement there. You know, I used to make terrariums and I just love having gemstones with terrariums and some natural elements as well, not just the um, gravel. So I made that one. And again, with the terrariums, I had some gemstone chips. So I did that one. And this one was the fishbowl from the tang. And I just, I wanted a round bowl so that I could make this kind of stand. This is the other um, sort of alloy type arrangement and so I made a different stand for that. And there you have it Miniacs! Nine tiny stands to choose from to boost the cute quotient of your Make It Mini lifestyle plants! If you enjoyed this episode of Diva Diorama and would like to see me do more projects like this, be sure to give it a thumbs up! I've got a lot more Make It Mini capsules both opened and unopened, so you never know what we're going to be doing next. So be sure to also subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to be notified when I upload my next video. Thank you so much for watching and remember, growing old is inevitable, but growing up is optional. So do something fun today! 
Until next time, bye! Bye!